consent. Informed consent is agreeing to take part in a clinical trial, knowing what the risks are. Now, an adult individual can give their legal consent simply by signing the document of informed consent, saying, I agree to participate. Fine. <coughs> but is that person giving valid consent. What do we mean by valid consent? Valid consent means that this individual knows what the risks are. Now I ask you, if an experimental drug has been tested on rats, mice, ducks, pigs, and monkeys, do we know what that drug is going to do to a human being? The answer is no. We do not know. Most adverse drug reactions do not show up. The ones that occur in humans do not show up in animal tests. So we've got a real problem. So how can we expect this unsuspecting altruistic individual to provide valid informed consent? The answer is we can't. Is it fair? We're not giving, him, we're not giving this person, he or she, what the real risks are because we don't know what they are. So how can this person agree to give their informed consent? This, this, is, this is the question. By the way, there's a, there's a roaring debate at the moment in Europe and in the United States about the ethics of using children in medical trials. Now, this is actually a huge embarrassment for the regulatory authorities and for the pharmaceutical industry because we are more and more recognizing that you cannot extrapolate a child dose based on adult body weight, for example. It's far more complicated than that, far more complicated than that. So the medical industry admits that you cannot extrapolate from adult dose to child. If you cannot do that, how the hell can you extrapolate from animal tests to human beings? Now that is a huge embarrassment to the, to the medical authorities, to the regulatory authorities, and to the pharmaceutical industry, and it's not going to go away. Now, what effects? When we take a drug, what is going to affect how that drug is metabolized in our body? Well, many, many things. We now know from the human genome that everybody in this room is very, very different. There's no more one size fits all. No more, you know, I'm going to give all of you 500 milligrams three times a day of an antibiotic and send you home. Because some of you here are going to metabolize, you're going to excrete that antibiotic from your system twice as fast as other people. So really, if I want to be scientific about it, I should double the dose for those, for those of you who excrete that drug twice as fast as everybody else. Age, let's take age, for example. We now know that, as I said before, you cannot extrapolate from adult dose to child. A two-year-old toddler will have a very different dose regimen to an adult or to a geriatric patient. So age is a very, very important factor. Ethnicity. <coughs> we know that Asians, 50% of them are alcohol intolerant. In other words, they get drunk very easily or it upsets and makes them feel ill because their livers can't cope with it. Not in the way that the average UK citizen after winning the World Cup <laughs> down a few. Um, Ethnicity, the Chinese require far lower doses of antidepressants and tranquilizers than Westerners do. Gender, uh, some heart drugs are four times more potent in women than in men. Now we're talking about life and death differences here. For 30 years, the scientific community has known these differences between men and women. And yet, only today are women being included in clinical trials. Yes. Another major area of concern is the use of chemicals in our environment. Now this is an ad that appeared very recently in the uh, magazine of the European Parliament. And what they want, what the EC wants to do is to test <coughs> hundreds of thousands of chemicals, tens of thousands of chemicals using animals. And we know that that is not scientific. You should know that today one can assess 
the toxicity of pesticides or other chemicals at the molecular, at the cellular level. You can do it on cells. You don't have to kill animals anymore. That's, that's passe. That's medieval science. So first of all, there's no need to use animals. Uh, when I say to you, don't, don't rely on the health authorities to look after your health. Um, if we take the hepatitis B vaccine, for example, about two years ago in the United States, um, because of public pressure, it was decided to remove the mercury content, which acts as a preservative, remove the mercury content from the hepatitis B vaccine. Now, most children, I would say also in the UK, receive about 15 doses of mercury along with their vaccines by the time they're one year old. We, now, we know, of course, that mercury is a nerve toxin. Now, that's not the sort of thing you want to give to a healthy newborn baby 15 times over. And it's only public pressure which made the health authorities remove the mercury content from the vaccine. So, so don't rely on Big Daddy. You have to do these things yourselves. We have to do these things ourselves. That pretty much sums up the, the formal presentation. Now we want to talk a little bit about what, what can we do about it. This is the problem. We're going to talk about some solutions. Animal experimentation is supported by three pillars. The first pillar is that of pseudoscience. By pseudoscience we mean that animal experimentation is pseudoscience. It's not reliable. It's not scientific. The second pillar is the legal pillar which is the system which supports animal experimentation. Most of the legislation to do with animal testing was written about 55 oh, years ago. It's out of date now, but it's still there. We have to change that. And the third pillar is, of course, the political system which supports animal experimentation. The good news is that as a result of all your efforts, we can see some cracks appearing in these pillars. And you only need to knock down one pillar for the whole lot to go, as in the domino effect. Okay? Pick your, pick your pillar, push it over, and the rest go. The next step is really to educate ourselves. Before we try to educate other people, we need to educate ourselves, become familiar with the facts, we have to know what we're talking about. We can then educate the public, we can educate our MPs, MEPs. Legislation, well, this refers to legal challenges. We have to probe. We have to find the weak spots in the system. Either by taking on tackling a specific animal experiment, which is particularly cruel or particularly unscientific, which is easy to hit, or go for the big time, which is a, a judicial inquiry. In other words, ask the government to launch a judicial inquiry into the questionable scientific validity of animal experiments in medical research.